First of all, I would like to thank the organizers who gave me this opportunity to, to uh, present this analysis on behalf of uh, the uh, working group. Um, a few background on adrenal cancer. Uh, so adrenal cortical carcinoma is a rare cancer type with an annual incidence of um, about 0.5 to 2 per million. And the overall five-year over, uh, survival with metastatic disease is less than 20%, which means this malignancy is quite as, is pretty bad. Uh, there is no standard uh, staging system for this disease, and mitotan has been the uh, only drug that approved that was approved by FDA, and the uh, uh, target therapy against this disease is quite disappointing, uh, mainly on, against the IGF-2 uh, gene. Uh, however, this uh, targeting of IGF-2 is only effective in 5% of the ACC cases. Now, it's, it's very important to mention that the adrenal cancer is the endocrine tumor, which means uh, I mean, in the adrenal cancer uh, patient, uh, about half of the cohort actually have this hormone access, which differentiate, differentiate this disease with uh, other, uh, other cancer types. Uh, now, TCGA initiated the adrenal cortical carcinoma project last year. Uh, the goal is to collect uh, 92 cases with exome sequencing, uh, uh, mRNA and microRNA sequencing, DNA copy number, methylation. Uh, we, uh, of all of these data types, uh, the data are almost complete, but we are expecting our protein arrays for 68 cases, and we're expecting a full, a complete set of um, clinical data at this point. The TCGA working group for adrenal cancer uh, formed last year. We have, so far, we have uh, finished the first pass analysis, including subtype analysis on different levels of, of, of data, and then we have finished the exome sequencing analysis, and we have run first pass of the structural variations, and we have some integrated analysis uh, that has been done. Uh, adrenal cortical carcinoma compared to other cancer types is a quite, quite uh, pure cancer type. Uh, you, you can easily appreciate here that uh, each dot in this figure represents one sample, and uh, even though there are a few cases that have um, relatively lower purity, but the overall the medium uh, uh, purity of adrenal cortical carcinoma is very high, uh, suggesting this tumor type is actually a very good prototype to study tumor biology. And uh, we have a method called estimate, uh, which we can, we can, by which we can look at the uh, gene expression uh, pathway activity. So we look at the EMU uh, pathway activity uh, using this method, and you can see here that adrenal cancer has the lowest EMU score, uh, which probably is related to the uh, hormone cortisol, because cortisol in adrenal cancer actually created a very hostile environment for the T cell. So uh, looking at the genomic level, the adrenal cancer have a relatively lower mutation frequency uh, compared to other cancer types. Uh, it is lower than ovarian cancer, lower than glioblastoma, but it is higher than another endocrine tumor, uh, thyroid here. Um, now we finished, we used uh, 91 exome sequencing. We identified six significantly mutated genes, including PP53, beta catenin many one PRKA, R1A, and a ribosomal protein. Uh, if you look at this mutation spectrum, uh, mutation clustering pattern uh, of those five significant mutated genes, uh, you can easily see that uh, all of the mutations in beta catenin uh, they occur in a relatively short region of this gene, uh, which in the pattern itself suggests that all of these mutations could be, could be activating mutations. And in the other genes, uh, the, the mutations uh, basically uh, uh, distribute across the gene body, uh, which may suggest there are inactivating, inactivating mutations. Now, now uh, I want to emphasize one gene called BRKA-R1A, um, because, because the, the story is that the, this protein is a uh, regulatory subunit of the protein kinase A. Now, this protein interacts with the catalytic domain, um, uh, it's called, uh, encoded by the gene PRKACA. Now this, 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 this gene, actually, in the last two months, there are several papers 
uh, that reports uh, the act recurrent activating mutation in the, in the catalytic domain of this protein. Uh, so if you, if you think about this, this could be very interesting because all of the protein kinase A catalytic domain mutation that occur, they were found in the adrenal, the adrenal adenoma. However, we found the PRKARYA, the regulatory subunit mutation in the carcinoma. Now you would imagine this result not only highlights the importance of this protein kinase A pathway in, in the adrenal tumor, but also it would be interesting to speculate how the mutations in uh, the regula uh, regulatory uh, subunits and the catalytic subunit that can lead to different out outcomes in, in the adrenal gland. Um, Copy number analysis found focal amplifications and deletions, and we found genes including TERT, TERT and CDK4, TERF2, and CCNU, exactly E1. We found uh, a, a link RNA on chromosome 4. We found P16 deletions, RB1, and ZNRF3 gene. Now, this, the, the TERF2 and the ZNRF3 uh, has, have not been reported in adrenal cancer. So if you, from IGV, you can easily appreciate this focal amplification of TERF2 and focal deletion of ZNRF3. ZNRF3, this gene is, is a won't pass for regular through gene. So I'll, I'll come back to this. Now, with these genes, um, we have, um, we come up with a landscape of, uh, a geno a genomic landscape of adrenal cortical carcinoma. Now, on the first panel, I show the mutation frequency um, and on, on, the, on the left side of the heat map, you see the uh, fraction of, um, of mutations of those genes uh, in our cohort. And on the right side, you see the amplifications and deletions um, of those genes. Now you can see that uh, the, mo the majority of the DNA RF3 alteration, uh, they're due to the deletion. Now for, the, for PV3, most of the alterations is, the, um, the, the, um, is mutation. Third is, is amplification, and beta continue is, is mutation. So, however, I think a very interesting observation is that, so this genomic landscape clearly separates the adrenal data set into two cohorts. One cohort with at least one uh, putative driver genes. Now, with another cohort, about 30% of the cohort that does not have single one's putative driver, uh, driver gene alteration. Now, this results actually uh, confirmed the finding by our uh, European collaborators. Uh, they published a new paper in uh, Nature Genetics, and in their cohort, they also observed a subset of adrenal uh, cortical carcinoma cases without a, a putative driver mutations. Uh, with uh, unsupervised methylation clustering, we found, uh, we found three groups with um, a, intermediate, a lower level, uh, low level, intermediate level and high level uh, methylations, we call them normal-like, uh, simp and hyper uh, group. Uh, microRNA uh, clustering found, uh, found six robust subgroups and, and uh, gene expression identified two groups. Now, our two groups actually recapitulated uh, the, the findings by, by the European group, uh, which they call C1A and C1B. Now, the C1A group, um, has a, a, a bad outcome, and the C1B has a slightly better outcome. Uh, so by overlaying these subtypes with the genomic landscape, you, uh, we found a remarkable enrichment of, of these different subtypes uh, with, uh, with the, this, uh, this group. For example, the group without uh, putative driver mutations, they are mostly C1B group, and they have a a normal-like methylation uh, pattern. We, um, we also looked at uh, structural variations, gene fusions in this context, and we did not find a recurrent uh, fusion transcripts. However, we found uh, recurrent pathogenes, and we found uh, sporadic uh, cancer genes uh, involving in, the, in this fusion. For example, we found a mTOR uh, gene fusion. Uh, so each box here represents one axon. Now you can see that uh, you can see a clear activation of, of this um, axon expression beyond this, break, uh, beyond this fusion size. Uh, now very interestingly, this mTOR fusion uh, actually retains the, uh, the catalytic domain of the mTOR protein. 
Now, we, this is, could be very important because we know we have uh, mTOR inhibitor. And there is another case of the fusion uh, that involves a gene called BRE. Now, BRE gene has been reported in uh, tumor, uh, adrenal tumor genesis, and it was uh, implicated as a, a, as a driver gene. Um, so, so we could, it, so this finding suggests this, this fusion might be a, a, a relevant, functional re relevant, relevant uh, fusion events in adrenal cortical carcinoma. At the pathway level, we found the uh, wound pathway to be the most frequently altered pathway with more than 45% of the, of the patients in our cohort have at least one gene altered in the, in the wound pathway. But most of the alterations uh, were contributed by uh, ZNRF3 uh, homozygous deletion and the beta continuing activating mutation. So with this, I would like to summarize uh, what, we have, what, have, what we have for the, for the adrenal cortical carcinoma. We found uh, potential new driver genes, including the NF3, uh, TERT and TERF, PRKA, R1A. Uh, we have uh, subtype analysis from MRI methylation, uh, copy number, and microRNA. Uh, integrated analysis highlighted 30% of the ACC without any apparent driver alteration. So we have, we're, we're expecting the RPPA and, and a complete uh, clinical data where there, this uh, data might give us some insights into this uh, subset. We have in, in free, uh, infrequent alterations uh, such as sporadic gene fusions and that may contribute to the adrenal tumor genesis and wound pathways uh, apparently in, in the most out of the pathway, uh, which uh, we hope can bring some insights into the uh, therapeutic um, development. Um, so I would, like, I would like to thank um, uh, okay, it's, it's, uh, return to my slides, please. Okay, um, so anyway, so I would like to uh, thank my uh, code, okay. So I would like to, this is a team effort, of course. Um, I would like to thank uh, many people, but especially my chair, um, Dr. Jordan, Tom Giordano and T Dr. Robert Hack. Uh, due to the space limit, I cannot list all the names, but, uh, I, but apparently many people contributed to this project. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so let us thank all the participants. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. So, uh, before you uh, go on, so I'm really curious about this driver negative subset. And, um, you know, as I understand it, these are also tumors with very high purity as understood by copy number analysis. And I just want to ask, how are you, uh, what are your thoughts as to, you know, how to pursue the driver negative subset and um, specifically um, in terms of, of things like fusion analysis or whole genome sequencing analysis? So right now we are not going to have whole genome. Um, now we have two, two things we're thinking to, to approach this subset. Uh, one is we're going to look at this uh, driver genes and that means the, the, the known driver genes, we think they're probably just infrequent and due to our sample size that we cannot find recurrent alterations in those uh, genes. So we're going to look at that and potentially that can uh, have some percentage of, of cases with, with, a, with a driver. Now another thing is we should, we will look at the germline data and now we want to see if, if we can find uh, by 10 to 15 percent cases with a germline mutation. Um, can I just follow up on that, Matthew? Um, so what doesn't come through in this is that those, those tumors are um, what we call low-grade adrenal cancers. They, most of them do have uh, IGF alterations, though, so they have sky-high IGF-2 expression, but that is the fascinating part of, of this project, and so we really want to focus in on, on those tumors. Um, but uh, so I just want to make that comment that, that, that the, it's really re recapitulating the, the classification that we do, you know, histo histopathologically. Thank you, Tom.
So, so I think the easiest way to talk about this, there's no mutation, uh, no driver mutation, you should say there's some driver pathway involved. That may be easier to understand because the, if, if there's no mutation, but there's something driving it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hope we hope we will have this data. Thank you. No question. So let us thank again all six fantastic, <laughs> fantastic talk this morning. Yeah. So yeah, we are going to resume the afternoon session at one o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Poster. Post. Poster session at one o'clock. Yeah. Okay.